to be playing and it's not going out. Can you hear? Can you see a countdown? Nice, wonderful pop. Did you get it? Did you get it? Yes. Okay, I gotta get on the watch bar. We don't have any sound. <laughs> Are you coming from the PC? Does it need to be on here? Uh, it's muted now. Can you hear me? <laughs> it's crazy how technology works. Uh, welcome to worship. We're so excited that you're here with us this morning. I uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you and your family are staying safe. Um, but uh, even though we must remain distant from one another, we can still sing God's praises and come together uh, and worship, uh, still united by the power of God's Holy Spirit. Um, so I'm thankful that you're here with us. Uh, I can't wait to see what God has in store for us. And the rest of this week. So, um, uh, a, a couple of quick announcements just to remind you. Um, we will have uh, our daily prayer service every weekday morning uh, at 10 o'clock a.m. right here on Facebook Live. So, please um, check into that. Um, and then we also have our Bible study uh, Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock in the evening uh, on Microsoft Teams. Uh, so, we have one. Uh, lesson left in the book of Amos. We're almost done with the book of Amos. 
which means that we're looking for a new book after that. So if you're trying to join a Bible study, now is the best time to do it. Let me know. I'll get you hooked up. Let Larry know. He'll get you hooked up. Uh, and we can, uh, we'd love to see more people join um, and, and have good conversation and dive into the scriptures that way. Um, uh, so uh, I, I believe that's all the announcements. Anybody else aware of any other announcements? Um, please go ahead right now and through the rest of uh, our worship service, put any prayer requests that you have. Uh, put them in the comments to this video so we can see and we can say hey. Um, and uh, uh, we will add you to our prayer list. And of course, please visit our prayer list. Uh, you can find it on our live updating newsletter that's on our website at firstcpchurch.org and click on newsletters and there you'll find our newsletter and our uh, uh, prayer list. So we need all the help we can get praying for our people. Um, a couple of updates. Um, William Merriman is still um, in the hospital. He's still um, trying to, they're still trying to find the source of his bleeding. Um, tests so far have come back negative uh, They don't, or inconclusive. They don't know what um, the source is. And so um, please continue to pray for William and for Diane. Um, but also, um, uh, William is continuing to need blood. He still needs blood. Um, uh, to, to He's losing blood a little bit every day, and so they keep um, giving him new uh, blood, which means that uh, if you are able to donate um, and uh, uh, are willing to, to donate your blood specifically in, in William's name, um, please do that. We're asking for, for help with blood. If you or any of your family members are able to do that, um, you can visit your blood bank um, and, and give them William Merriman's name, um, and they will be able to uh, take that blood in his name for him. Um, so uh, all the help you can give would, or give would be uh, greatly appreciated. We greatly covet your prayers um, for William and Diane for strength and for recovery. Um, so please continue to look at them up. Uh, we also, um, uh, Pat Muncy had uh, knee surgery yesterday, a scope to check some things out. She is recovering well. Um, we'll thank you for, uh, we're thankful for your prayers. Um, and Barbara Weaver's brother, J.C. Johnson, um, has been in the hospital and is slowly improving. He's doing better. Um, uh, they think that it's uh, diverticulitis that um, he's suffering with. So um, please continue to pray for Barbara and J.C. Um, and also, uh, Chuck Dowdy's uh, mother-in-law, uh, Trudy Campos, uh, died yesterday, uh, 82 years old. So please pray for Chuck and his family um, as they uh, struggle with this, this hard grief that comes in this strange season. Um, so uh, please go ahead and let us know what um, prayer requests you have. Um, put them in the chat, and any time throughout the worship service, um, throw them in there, and we can uh, add you to our list and lift you up. Um, we're so thankful uh, for your prayers, and we are so honored to be able to pray for you. Um, so, uh, anybody in here got anything else before we jump on into this thing? No? Let's do some shouts out. Who's here? Pat Baker's here. Lynn Tilson's here. Libby Porter is here. Marilyn Lynch. Caroline Stewart. Shouts out Merrill College. Miss Evelyn Shackelford is here. Good morning. Miss Anita's here. Tammy is here, good morning. <clears throat> Miss Joyce Shepherd, good morning. Uh, let's see, Mr. Jack Shepherd, Jeremy is here, hey Jeremy. Um, let's see, Miss Charlotte's here, Charlotte and Dick. Miss Molly is here, Molly and Albert, good morning to all of you. Uh, let's see, PJ's here, Mary Guest is here. Tamara's here, hey Miss Tamara. Um, the Halfords are here, Miss Marcine is here, good morning. Uh, let's see, John and Joanne are here, good morning. Scott and Paige are here, good morning to all of you. It's so good to see you. Um, if you're here and you check in, let us know you're here. Just comment and say, good morning. We'd love to welcome you and shout you out and uh, uh, pray for you and give you good wishes on this morning. Um, all right, well, um, we're going to uh, transition into our time of worship. Um, so we're going to have our uh, prelude. And then uh, I'm going to uh, light the candles.
beautiful music and with a song. I'll be reading from Psalm 66, verses 8 through 12, verse 16, and verse 20. So, my friends, let us prepare for worship. Uh, let us prepare our hearts. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me? Almighty God, you gather us together from north and from south, from east and from west. We're so thankful that where we are, there your spirit is also. We ask in this time as we uh, unite together from far distances, that you will send your spirit to be with us here in this place and in the place of all people listening to your word. God, be with us as we listen, as we try to understand your will for us, and as we try our best to follow Jesus and live that out. God, we are so thankful that you are here with us. Bless our time together and let it be fruitful. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, I want to invite you to stand wherever you are at home. Uh, if you are able or comfortable, I want you to stand. We're going to sing a couple of hymns to sing God's praises to start off our time this morning. First, we're going to sing... Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. That's him number 210, uh, and the words will be on the screen. So, friends, let's stand and sing together.
Amen. Now, if you will remain standing, we're going to flip and sing another one. We're going to sing number 225, Come Christians Join to Sing. So, friends, let's sing together. And I'm in indeed. You can have a seat at home. And uh, at this time, uh, we will have our prayer of confession. So I'm uh, very thankful to Keir Hull, who will be reading our prayer this morning. So I'm going to throw it over to her uh, for our prayer. So friends, uh, let's pray. Let us pray. God of the past, present, and future, you are coming in power to bring all nations together in your kingdom. You promised redemption in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, but we have not expected your kingdom, for we live casual lives, ignoring your promises. We accept lies as truth, we exploit neighbors, we abuse the earth, and we refuse your justice and peace. Please hear us as we confess our sins silently. Grant us wisdom to welcome your way and to seek things that will endure when Christ comes to judge the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. By the power of Jesus Christ, those who were once blind can now see. Let us live the resurrection life we are called to live and leave our old ways behind. Thanks be to God that we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Kier. Um, at this time, uh, we are going to affirm our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. But it is almost time for our Josiah box, so I want you to uh, be ready. Have your finger 
computers ready to start typing in your celebrations that we have to share. Um, as soon as we're done with this uh, affirmation of faith, we will celebrate and rejoice together and ring the bell. So, uh, friends, uh, the words will be on your screen. Uh, let us now affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, thanks to the grace of God that unites us and that knows no bounds and no distances, we are able to receive the peace that Jesus Christ so freely gives us. So let's take that peace and give it to all others. So turn to all the people you're worshiping with today and wish them the peace of Christ. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. All right, y'all. It is Josiah Box time, so go ahead and comment down there uh, in the chat what things we should celebrate, uh, what things we should rejoice about. Uh, ooh, I'm looking at these in the back, too. Um, I have a few very special ones. Um, these are all from BJ and Linda Halperin, so I'm so thankful for them and excited for this. First, they want to uh, congratulate five of their grandchildren who have now graduated from high school, junior college, and university all in one week. That is so exciting, and let's ring the bell. Uh, second off, they say uh, BJ and Linda will celebrate their wedding anniversary on Tuesday. They have been married now for 58 years. Boy, God is good, isn't he? Is the day after her anniversary it is this Wednesday. She will be 80. BJ just celebrated his 80th last month. So thankful for another year to continue to live. I love God, and I'm so thankful for both of you. And they say they just want to express their thankfulness uh, for their church family and the many blessings that God has given them, uh, especially this church family. Well, we are so thankful for you, BJ and Linda glad that you are here uh, with us and able to continue to be a part of our family, even though we must be apart. Um, let's see. Adrian says, Alex and Caroline will be getting married on Saturday. Woo! Finally. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Uh, Beth Julian said, zero coronavirus deaths in DeSoto County this week. That is wonderful news, and hope that trend continues. Thankful for health and safety for sure. Avery, you got some for me? Let's see. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, Paul and Diane Cecier, their daughter was married yesterday. Congratulations to Angelique and her husband. Uh, what's, it, what's her husband's name, Paul? Austin. Congratulations to Angelique and Austin. We're so glad. Uh, that you are able to start this new journey together. Congratulations from all of us. Um, let's see. Please let me know. Throw your Josiah Box celebrations in the chat so we can rejoice together. Uh, let's see. Miss Thelma Tate is here. Good morning, Miss Thelma. Miss Glenda is here. Trish Irby is here. Good morning. Miss Nancy Smith is here. Hope you and uh, old brother Jim out there are doing well. Let's see, who else is here? Emmy's here. Good morning, Emmy. Um, Terry is here. Terry Matter, good morning. So glad you could join us. Uh, and Julie is here. Julie Graggett, is that correct? Is that how you say that? So glad that you're here with us, Julie. Thank you for being here. 
Jay Wall's here. Shouts out to Advent. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, Rustin Haven's here. I miss you, man. And no offense to you, because I do miss you, but I think I might miss even more your boy running up and down all over this stage and shouting his praises. Uh, so tell Jordy we love him and we miss him. And Mama Jan's got a special big kiss for him waiting whenever we can come back. I know she misses that sweet boy, too. Um, so uh, good to see you, James. Hope you and the family are doing well. Um, Kim Foster is here. Good morning. Jamie Potts is here. Good morning. Hope y'all are doing so well. Um, Frank Ward is here. Good morning, Pastor. I uh, hope you and uh, Miss Linda are doing wonderfully well. Let's see. Oh, I think I've got a... Yeah, there's one. I believe we have a birthday this morning. I believe that is Mr. Lane Porter. Happy birthday to Lane, Lanthony, Schmeagel, all of the names that that young man goes by. Uh, love you, dude. Hope you're doing well. Um, any other? Uh, Pat Muncie is here. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad to hear that your surgery went well, and hope you are recovering so uh, wonderfully and nicely. I'm glad that you're able to be with us. Um, let's see. Stephanie Tabor is here. Good morning. Thank you for being here. So good to see you. Um, let's see. Say what? Christian. Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, this week, uh, Mama Jan's grandson, Christian Little John, who has been uh, out in the field, was able to come home this week, and he actually was very helpful in our uh, worship and music ministry team meeting that we had uh, virtually over Zoom. So uh, let's ring the bell for Christian being home, and for all of those um, healthcare workers, those in the armed forces, um, working so hard to keep our people safe. Um, so we're so thankful to Christian for his service and all the others um, in our church family and beyond. Pat and PJ are here. Oh, and it's also Alex's birthday today. He's getting married on Saturday. It's his birthday today. My goodness. It's a big week, y'all. Just ask BJ and Linda. They got an anniversary and a birthday one day apart. All right. Well, thank y'all so much for that. We're going to uh, move on into our offering time. But don't let that stop you from posting your Josiah Box celebrations. So please... Uh, if you have something to share, let us let us know, and we'll celebrate any time throughout the service. In the middle of the sermon, I don't care. Whatever you want, whenever you are uh, able to uh, to share your joys with us, we want to we want to know, and we want to be able to celebrate with you. Um, so um, this time uh, we will uh, focus on our offering, and that's something that we've been doing every week. Uh, where since we aren't able to come be present at church and give our offerings here. Uh, we still need uh, to continue to support the work of the church. Uh, God's ministry does not pause or stop just because all of life seems to shut down for a little bit. The work of the church will continue, and so that means that we continue to need your support and your funds. Um, so we're so thankful for your gifts and your offerings. And during this time right now, I want you to go get an envelope. I want you to go get your gift for this week together so that you can prepare it sign it, do everything, address it, do everything you need to do so you can put it in the mail first thing tomorrow um, so uh, we can receive your gifts and so we can continue to do the whole reason that we are a church in the first place, uh, which is to do the work that God has called us to do. So I'm going to play a song, um, and I'm going to, uh, and during this time I want you to um, pray about the gifts that God has given us and the ways that God is calling you uh, to support the continued ministry of the church. Um, this song is called, I Surrender. good on the guitar sound boys here I am down 
down on my knees again, surrendering home, surrendering home. Find me here, Lord, as you draw me near. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I surrender. Drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold. I hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst. With arms stretched wide, I know you hear my cry. Speak to me now. Speak to me now. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you. Like a rushing wind, Jesus breathe within. Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way in me. Like a mighty storm, stir within my soul. Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way. to know you more. I want to know you more. Amen. Uh, friends, let's pray together. God, you bless us in so many ways, ways that we could never understand. And we're so thankful that all the gifts that you have continue to sustain us and inspire us. And we ask, God, that you accept these gifts that we give back to you, that you bless them and multiply them, Lord, for the glory of your kingdom. And we pray that you bless all of those who give, that they may continue to be your hands and feet in the world. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Thank you all so much for continuing to support us. Uh, and so now what I want you to do is I want you to stand. We're going to sing one more song before we get into the message. Um, and we are going to sing a song that I think is fitting for our um, text this morning, which is Break Every Chain. So let's stand together and let's sing. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. To the all-sufficient sacrifice so freely given, such a price bought, our redemption, heaven's gates swing wide. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. It's an army rising up. It's an army rising up. It's an army rising up. Break every chain, 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 break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Amen. Y'all have a seat. Nope, lost my pick. All right, our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles. If you would like to turn along to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 9, uh, we will be reading verses 1 through 19. I grabbed my Bible because I thought I was going to read it, but guess what? I'm not. Uh, because I'm so very thankful to Miss Marilyn Kelly, uh, who has so graciously offered to read the scripture for us this morning. So friends, uh, let's hear the word of God. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be reading from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that, he, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you? Lord, Saul asked, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. 
Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias. Come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. Amen. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Uh, Friends, let's pray. Almighty God, for your gift of the Holy Scriptures, we give you thanks. We pray that in this time you would send your Spirit to be with us, to guide us, to walk alongside us, to help the scales fall from our eyes so that we can see what you want us to see. Be with us in this time. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. You know what I can't stand? Larry, take a guess. That's right, Alabama football. Or maybe it's just Alabama fans, uh, but they just get on my last nerve. You know what I mean? I mean, the arrogance, the misplaced confidence, the certainty that they are unstoppable is perhaps the most infuriating thing in all of sports. I mean, just think about Larry Bryant. Everybody close your eyes and think back to the last time you saw Larry's smug grin on a Sunday morning in the fall shouting, struggle win to everybody who walks by, as if the rest of us don't have feelings, am I right? Or think about Ronnie Long, huh? Wearing that deep crimson Alabama shirt, belly laughing and puffing on that cigar after Alabama beat Tennessee 63-3 to again. And that awful rallying cry. What is it? I can't even remember what, what they say. It, it, oh, every time I hear someone shout, Roll Tide, it just makes me want... Bleh. Sorry, excuse me. I mean, they even smell like dirty recruiting practices. You know what I mean? I don't know about you, but I can't stand Alabama fans. I'm getting all riled up just thinking about it, y'all. We haven't had football in months, and yet the thought of that crimson just makes me sick. It does something to me. It makes my blood boil. It makes me clench my teeth. I just really, really hate Alabama football. And you know I hate hating things because it throws me off. You know, I'm not myself when I hate something but I just can't shake it. It's not my fault. It's their fault for making me hate them. I don't know. I, I, I think I just need to calm down for a minute. Larry, you see what you've done to me? I know. Let's talk about the Bible. That almost always comforts me, right? That can get us away from some of this hatred that's coursing through my veins. What did we read again? What did Marilyn read? Acts? Saul? Ah. I'm just flustered at this point. Okay, uh, so Saul's story. 
Let's, let's start with who Saul is, right? Maybe that will help calm me down. Actually, if you remember, we met Saul last week. Uh, last week we read about the very first time that Saul of Tarsus is introduced to us in the whole Bible. Uh, and that's in Acts chapter 7. And back then, last week, uh, Saul was a very popular religious figure. He was a Pharisee, and, and the way Luke chooses to introduce us to the character of Saul is pretty cool. You know, the first time we meet Saul, he is standing over the cloaks of all the people who stoned the apostle Stephen to death. And then he looked on Stephen's brutal murder with approval? That, that can't be right. Wait a second. Maybe this story of Saul won't get us that far away from hatred after all anyway. Unfortunately, at this point in the church's history where we're reading... The church had very many enemies. Remember, the Jesus movement began as a debate within Judaism, right? Where there was a faction who followed Jesus and believed in His way, and there was a faction who rejected Jesus' way. Furthermore, though, Israel was under Roman occupation. So the Roman Empire was agitated by these new troublemakers and rabble-rousers who followed this guy named Jesus. So the church, from the beginning has dealt with internal threats and external threats. Both Jews and Romans were trying to kill our Jesus-following Jewish ancestors. So needless to say, it was not easy being a Jesus follower in the first century. One of these great Jewish leaders who rejected the Jesus movement was a man named Saul from Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was highly educated and a second-generation Pharisee, but most importantly, he was very good at his job, which when we meet him in the book of Acts is persecuting followers of Jesus. And our very introduction to him shows him his skill as he watches with approval as the apostle Stephen is stoned to death for speaking out against the religious elites. Saul was so good at what he did that he was commissioned specifically by the high priest in Jerusalem to go to Damascus in Syria to root out all the Jewish Jesus followers there. But as he was on his way to capture the followers of Jesus in Damascus, he is intercepted, not unlike a Mac Jones pass in the red zone. Anyway, as he is on the way, Saul hears a booming voice and sees a blinding light. The voice comes down from heaven and says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? In a daze, Saul responds, Who are you, Lord? The voice replies, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. Think about it for a second. Saul is a Jewish man who persecutes and kills other Jewish people who follow a certain rabbi's teachings because he believes that this rabbi and his teachings are a joke. He thinks that that Galilean peasant uh, who was uh, following or walking around, teaching, gathering a following, Paul thought that he was disrespectful to authority, that he was disrespectful to Torah, and to top it all off, he proved how wrong he was by getting himself crucified just like all the shameful scum do. So in the aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion, Saul was justified in his persecution of Christians because Jesus had died a shameful death, proving that everything that he said was a lie. All Jesus had to do was stay dead, and Saul would have lived the rest of his life in relative peace. Instead, as Saul traveled the road to Damascus, he encountered not Jesus, but the resurrected Christ. This is an important distinction. Jesus didn't just appear to him in a vision or walk by as if nothing had changed or had happened, but Jesus appeared to Saul living his new resurrected life, proving that what Jesus said all along was true. 
It was not Jesus that changed Saul's mind, but the resurrected Jesus. The Jesus that wasn't still in the tomb. The Jesus that moved and spoke and changed lives by his very appearance. So Saul continues on into Damascus as he is commanded. Meanwhile, in the city, a disciple named Ananias heard the voice of God come to him and say, Hey, man, so I need you to do a thing for me. There's a guy coming into town who needs your help. So go find him and lay hands on him so that he'll be able to see again. Oh, and by the way, his name is Saul of Tarsus. Bye! Ananias is pretty stunned. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say Saul of Tarsus? The Saul of Tarsus? He knows who Saul of Tarsus is. The whole Jewish world knows who Saul of Tarsus is. The very name strikes fear into the heart of Jesus' followers everywhere. So Ananias pushes back, but God is insistent, as God has been known to be. So let's just imagine this crazy scene here. Ananias is told by God that Saul, the most famous Christian killer, is coming to see him and needs his help so that Saul, the most famous Christian killer, could become a follower of Jesus. Look, y'all, I'm all about listening to God when God speaks. But if God told me to go help the one who I knew was going to kill me, I'd question if that was the voice of God or not. Thankfully, Ananias is a better disciple than I am. So he goes and finds Saul and he lays hands on him. And something like scales fall from Saul's eyes. And he's able to see it. What a story, what a powerful testimony to the power of God to overcome differences and to unite people who deeply believe differently to the point that they would kill each other. If only this story had something to say to us today. And here, again, we come back to the beginning, because when it comes down to it, this story is a story of hatred of what hatred does to you and what we can do to overcome it. I think the most profound writer on the effects of hatred, maybe in the history of the world, uh, must be uh, Howard Thurman, the former dean of the Howard University Chapel and a foundational mentor to Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Reverend Howard Thurman wrote a book called Jesus and the Disinherited, which I believe should be required reading for all Christians. Thurman wrote Jesus and the Disinherited in 1949, before the Civil Rights Movement, when racism was at one of its many peaks in the history of the United States. Thurman, as a black man, wrote extensively on what hatred does to the communities who suffer oppression. But I think his most valuable contribution to theology is his incredible articulation of what hatred does, not to the one who is being hated, but to the one who hates. Howard Thurman knew something fundamental about hatred, and that is that it erodes the soul of the one who hates another. In Jesus and the Disinherited, he says, Hatred destroys, finally, the core of the life of the hater. While it lasts burning in white heat, its effect seems positive and dynamic, but at last it turns to ash, for it guarantees a final isolation from one's fellows. It blinds the individual to all values of worth, even as they apply to himself and to his fellows. Hatred bears deadly and bitter fruit. You see, friends, the thing about hatred is that it cannot be controlled. It cannot be directed. Hatred is a disease that eats away at a person's spirit, causing irreparable damage. It was true in the life of Saul. It was true in the lives of the white racists of the 20th century. And it is true of all those who hate 
today. But here's the thing about preaching on hatred in our world today, church. I'm in a bit of a bind here. Because when you're trying to preach and convict people, here's the thing. Almost nobody claims to be full of hate. No one says that they hate others. Yeah, there's some dark corners of the internet where white supremacists and neo-Nazis proudly proclaim their vicious hatred. But the vast majority of people genuinely believe that they don't hate anyone, especially Christians. We all say things like, I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. I just disagree with some people. We mask our hatred and we call it something else. But that doesn't stop it from eating away at us all the same. The truth is, all of us have a little Saul in us. And here's the thing to remember about Saul. He was a devout follower of God. He was a religious leader who loved God deeply and believed that persecuting and killing Jesus' followers was what God wanted him to do. We all have our holy crusades that we think God is calling us to, but that really simply allow us to live out our hatred for the other, for the one who is not like us. It's a hard thing to admit, but the hatred that is within us must be confronted and addressed or else it will fester. So what is the solution to our constant struggle with hatred of the other? Our friend Howard Thurman beautifully articulates something that makes hatred easy. He says, hatred often begins in a situation where there is contact without fellowship. Contact that is devoid of any of the primary overtures of warmth and fellow feeling and genuineness. Contact without fellowship. What is such a powerful image. Saul had plenty of contact with Jesus followers. He threw them in jail all day long. But his refusal to fellowship with them led him to hate them instead of to love them and respect them as fellow human beings. So the solution that God provided for Saul was to meet a Jesus follower in a vulnerable state, one where he wouldn't be able to persecute or harm this follower, but where he would be forced to fellowship with him. Ananias prays with Saul and lays hands on him, and suddenly contact grows and becomes genuine fellowship. You see, the solution to hatred is presence. It's being. And if I'm not being clear about how this relates to our world today, you hear me say it all the time from up here, but our nation and our world are more pitted against each other than we ever have been. And I think the reason that we have reached this point as a society is because we have plenty of contact with people who don't like each other, but almost no fellowship. You see people who you disagree with or don't like on the news or on social media all the time, but how often do you sit down with them at your dinner table? What I'm saying is if you don't like liberals or Democrats, you need some liberal friends. And if you don't like conservatives or Republicans, guess what? You need conservative friends. If only there was a place where we already went on a weekly basis, either in person or virtually, that contains both liberals and conservatives who love each other dearly as a family called by God to serve and to love. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what the church is. That's what our church is. Friends, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a pen and a sheet of paper. And take a moment to be honest with yourself. Write down who it is in this world who you have a serious problem with. We don't even have to use the word hate, even though that's really what it is. I'll even start. If we're talking about people who we really struggle to fellowship with, I really struggle to love 
rich people. Like really rich people. I know that's wrong of me. But that's a darkness inside me that I have to deal with. So write down who it is that you struggle with. Write down who it is that you refuse to fellowship with. Maybe it's liberals, maybe it's conservatives, maybe it's black people, maybe it's immigrants, maybe it's gay people, maybe it's police officers, maybe it's politicians, maybe it's southerners or northerners. But we must confront our biases and be honest with ourselves and with God in order to move past them. We have the power, by the grace of God, to do what Ananias did and open ourselves to the invitation of God to, fo- to fellowship with our enemies. And I firmly believe that that is what is going to solve our problems, which means I have something to say. Larry, I'm sorry. You really don't smell that bad. And I guess I kind of think Roll Tide is maybe kind of a little bit cool. I'm sorry for those things I said about you. And, and Ronnie, you too. I guess y'all are pretty cool. Friends, this week, let us all come together to vow to stop hating Alabama fans as much as we want to. And maybe we can start living the resurrection life that we are called to live. Thanks be to God. Thank you. After a, a sermon about Saul seeing the light and eventually becoming Paul, I don't think there's a better song that we could sing. So I want to invite you to stand from home as we sing Hank Williams' old gospel song, I Saw the Light. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. 